Tom here from Lawrence Systems and XCPNG is now at version 8.2 and there's a new version of Zen Orchestra as well. I haven't done a video in a little bit so I want to cover some of the news and things that are at least exciting to me and maybe to you if you clicked on this video about my favorite open source hypervisor. Before we jump into the details, let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the project, I will leave links down below to other videos where I've dove deep into all the functions and features, and there's a lot of them for this entirely open source project. I like to remind people that, that this is something that you can get for free to get started. It is one of my favorite ways to build out home labs because it supports full software defined networking. So you can build out essentially like virtual infrastructure with it, tie together physical servers with virtual LAN. We're gonna talk about some of those new enhancements they have around that. And of course the fact that, well, it's completely free. And this is kind of cool. And I've got videos on how to build it all right from the source code. But let's talk about the new features and updates. Now we do have my server running XCPNG version 8.2. And I want to talk just briefly on how you get to version 8.2. Right here, I have my XCPNG upgrade demo. And I just want to cover this really briefly. This is how you update the core of XCPNG. And if you're wondering how you set something like this up in case you want to build an XCPNG inside of an XC, XCPNG that's referred to as nesting, and you have to turn on to make this function nested virtualization, this little option right here under advanced. This is actually kind of fun if you ever want to nest something else, another hypervisor uh, for testing. Probably not the ideal thing for production, but for hey lab environments, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna take this real quickly and show you from 8.1 to 8.2, and it's done as easily as edit the, actually I type vim, but I know vice what's built in, etsy yum repos.d xcpng.repo. Then we're gonna quickly do a search and replace. And what that command does in Vi is goes through and finds all the 8.1s and switches them for 8.2s. Then we save. Then just do a um, upgrade. It'll go out, fetch the new updates and the changes, download them and say, hey, would you like to download the new version and say yes. Now, this is good for point upgrades. This is not a good idea if there's a full version upgrade, like going from seven to eight, but from going from 8.1 to 8.2, this is all you have to do, then stop all the virtual machines running on it, restart it, and now you're at the new version. Now let's talk about some of the new features. Now, the first thing of note, this is gonna be a long-term support version, XCPNG 8.2 LTS. So five years of support is gonna be on there. That's actually pretty cool and they're gonna offer extended support as well. And you don't have to jump on 8.2 if you're nervous about upgrading, but I haven't had any problems with any of the systems that we've updated and go check their forums. They're pretty active people talking about problems they may have had or you know challenges that they may have faced with the upgrade. Most of them have been around some issues with Zen Center not being completely compatible, but I don't use Zen Center. I do everything with Zen Orchestra, so that really hasn't been an issue for me and I haven't had any other issues. A few of the main feature support is UEFI support. Now I've been testing this a little bit. Um, I don't really use it much. I've always just left things at BIOS. Maybe I'll do some testing in the future, but I know this is a request a lot of people had that it get UEFI support, so they've now baked this all in. Open flow controller access. They've been doing a lot of updates and adding functionality to the software to find networking controller. This is really fascinating to me because this allows you to have Zen Orchestra coordinate physically different hosts and then create essentially virtual LANs between them. So you can have your infrastructure built essentially without any actual network interfaces that are physically connected to other interfaces. So you'll be able to tie these systems together. Eventually it does have to go out of interface to get to the other side, but you could put your firewall and a public IP address on there, have all private IP ranges in the back end, And this just allows a lot of flexibility. And 
it is really slick the way they keep adding more and more features and encryption between the way the two devices talk to each other. So you're able to transport this between servers securely, create a secure backend network. This is really cool for both lab work or even production work where you need to have, let's say a series of servers, database servers or web servers on the back end communicating with each other, but then only one front end interface where you expose everything. Uh, there's been a lot of work on this and for people who design hosting infrastructure, this is really cool. So you only have to have every one little piece public facing as opposed to having all of your backend public facing and firewalling it off, which is of course led to many problems and misconfigurations where people use a lot of public IPs to pass database servers and have them talking to web servers and locking them down. This way, if you keep it all on the private side, you can keep those locked down completely and only expose things as needed. I even tested this, but I think it's kind of neat that they're working on it. And I know some people are gonna hammer out, just use an AMD processor to solve this problem. And that sounds reasonable until you realize the number of Intel servers that are susceptible to the Spectre meltdown problems. And the mitigations to them were frequently turning off cores and just shutting it off until we know more. Well, now we understand more that the potential for things to be broken between two different VMs running, if they share a core, there is the potential using the problems discovered with the Spectre and Meltdown that they may be able to have some data exfiltrated or figured out based on the timings and a lot of other details. This is core scheduling, which allows you to keep hyperthreading on and group together the CPUs, the vCPUs of a particular thread to a particular VM and kind of fixing and mitigating that. This would allow you to not have to take as much of a speed hit um, and dedicate those cores to it. It's interesting. It's something maybe I'll play around with. Uh, I think it's kind of a cool that they're working on some solutions to that because, well, I mean, the other solution is replacing your hardware to gain the speed back, and that's not always feasible and fits in everybody's budget. Now, this is something that's been asked about a lot is when will it get Ceph and Gluster? I, I've seen people comment before on this. And yes, yeah, Ceph and Gluster are now in the experimental phases, but being integrated in. I don't usually use these or they're definitely an use case for them for very large designed systems. Um, I'm more of a ZFS person and using external storage, but natively building this and I still think is the right step because obviously there's a demand and uh, there are companies that I've talk to that are using this at scale and well, it makes sense for them to be using those. Uh, they've added some updated Intel CPU support. And previously I mentioned they've also added some of the new AMD support. So we're seeing all the more modern processors become supported in here. Now this is based on CentOS. So the kernel that comes with the CentOS, as long as there's support for the same version of the kernel they use, there's generally support for the hardware in XCPNG. Being it's all Linux based, it actually has quite a broad hardware support. Now, worth mentioning as well is XCP, NG, and Vios. Now, Vios is a command line driven, very high performance, very feature rich firewall type operating system. And they have now natively built in all the drivers and work great with XCP, NG. This goes back to that building your virtual infrastructure and having it perform really well and all those firewall functions, well, you can load Vios on there. I've done other videos of it working with PFSense. I'm not a big Vios user. I played around just a little bit with it. Um, so before someone says, when are you gonna do a video on it? I don't know when, it's not something I do a lot of, but if I, if I get into it in the future, I'll certainly be doing some videos on it. It's really popular in data centers and in really high intense operations. Um, and of course, being built into the hypervisor, if you're looking at doing a hosting storage build out, this is kind of a cool combination combination of using Vios with all of its performance tied into XCPNG for your hosting stack. Now released today is Zen Orchestra 5.5.3 and one of the things they're really working on a lot and this has been a refactoring of a lot of code and a lot of efficiency brought in is the way the backup system works. And there are two different methodologies in here. One of them is if you're running everything in your own stack, Zen Orchestra, and it's tied to your Zen server, backups are relatively simple. I've got a couple in-depth videos on that, but it's all happening locally. What if I wanted to run my controller here at my office, but in my data center, kick off a backup, but still use the control plane from the Zen Orchestra in here. Well, the challenge would be getting the data back and forth. So this is where backup proxies come along. And what a backup proxy does is allow you to designate a VM to proxy and handle the orchestration of moving the VMs around and doing the backups of them, which may be real data intensive and move them around to your local storage and create the snapshots. That is great because that'll all happen over there and you're just sending the commands over to here and the results are coming back to your local machine. So when they started revamping 
writing all the code for this, this brought them into improving a lot of backups overall. So the refactoring of that code is slowly working its way into the local code as well. And especially we're gonna see better support for doing the Delta backups, the incrementals. And the worry of an incremental backup is that you could have a broken piece of the chain and the way the merge requests go by refactoring this into a more efficient way, they are going to be able to mitigate that risk. They already do verification to make sure this works, but this is gonna add some more robustness and a more efficiency efficient way to get this done. So I'm excited about the improvements on here. So we're gonna start seeing more backup code and make it a lot more efficient. Now, one of the things they did add of note in here, and it's been added for a little while, is when you're doing the Delta backups, you're able to specify after how many Deltas to start over and do a full backup because each Delta is changed. So each one is a incremental change to the previous. And if you corrupted a Delta in the middle, you could have a real problem. If you didn't know that Delta was broken and you tried to restore it, well, then you'd have a really big problem. And the way you mitigate that is you do a full backup every now and then, and they have the option to specify that, but their refactored code is gonna make this whole system much more efficient. So I'm looking forward to a lot of that. And the last thing I wanna cover is Terraform. This is really slick if you're doing the whole code is designing infrastructure. Terraform is a cloud platform agnostic tool for building, changing, and versioning infrastructure. And they've tied all this together with Zen Orchestra. And this is really cool. I don't use Terraform myself, but I knew, know a few people that use this at scale to build out large scale projects because, well, when you have to spin up a few hundred machines, you don't want to have to use some, you know, web interfaces, slick as it might be. There are tools to make this even easier, especially when you want to auto deploy, auto spin up things as needed, and then destroy them later and have a lot of flexibility where you do this all in a script. Terraform is a great answer for that. And now they have built in so you can build these Terraform template VMs and then have Terraform tie into this to be able to set up your deployments. So that's a really cool integration on there. Uh, check the blog, there's more details than I could probably cover in an hour, but this will of course lead to me doing some updated videos because in some of the previous videos I would have said things like it doesn't have Sefter, Ceph or Gluster support, and now it does have Ceph and Gluster support. So uh, with all the excitement, all the new versions, I will of course be doing some new getting started videos and I wanna do some in-depth you know, from scratch builds to show how you can use Zen Orchestra and XEPNG to fully build your own open source lab. And this is a very accessible tool because, well, the code's all there and free and it's open source. And uh, it's a lot of learning if you want to dive into hypervisors. And if you want to look at people who run things at scale, head over to their forums. There are some large deployments that you'll see people mentioning and talking about some of the things they're doing. It's a pretty outstanding project and just keeps getting better all the time. The dev team can't say enough good things about them. Uh, they are very responsive and very open about how they do everything. That's just a beauty of open source development. All right, links will be below to the individual blogs and some of the other videos I have on this topic. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.